God, plus Father, plus Jesus, plus Holy Ghost. In the entire Bible, there are 777 times 7 mentions. That is God. Welcome to episode 6 of Macro Patterns. And there's so much I want to say right now to preface this, but I know this is going to be a long episode, so I'm going to try to dive as directly in as I can. Because there's a lot to say when it comes to 1 John 5, 7 in the King James Bible, uh, where you have modern Bibles basically removing this entire verse. Uh, modern Bibles do not say, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The ESV, the NIV, the NASB, all scholars today think this verse is not inspired. They think it's uh, something that was made up and added to the Bible later on. This verse is inspired. If you have not seen the first five episodes, I recommend you watch those first because we're going to be looking at raw patterns uh, today and along with peer patterns. So if you're, if you're more of a skeptic um, and you're not easily convinced by something, which is good. I recommend you watch the first five episodes before you watch this one or go back and watch them after this one's done so you can see the pure patterns in action before you see raw patterns. And I'll, sh I'll tell you what the difference is if you're not familiar with that here in a little bit. Before we get into the patterns today, I want to cover first of all the deity of Christ and then I want to cover the person of the Holy Ghost because for whatever reason, this is highly disputed, especially online, especially with cults. Uh, almost every single cult tries to remove the deity of Christ. However, it is so clear in the Bible. Throughout, all throughout the Bible it's clear, but this is the peak. This is the pinnacle, because you're not going to get any higher authority than this. You can say David called Jesus God, and you can say that Thomas called Jesus God, and you can go through the whole list, but this is where the Father calls Jesus God. And you can't get higher than the Father. So if you reject this passage, then there's nothing else anybody can do or say because you have literally become your own authority. You are, have placed yourself above the word of God the Father because you're saying, no, his word is not true. I know better than him. Okay, so Hebrews 1 verses 5 to 8. I have the Father in uh, the purple and Jesus the Son in the blue. Okay, so you're going to see that very clearly as we read it. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, unto the Son he, the Father, saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. This is spoken unto the Son. This is crystal clear. This is God the Father calling Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So this is indisputable. Jesus Christ is God according to God the Father. There is nothing else. You can't give me any scripture that goes above that or, or uh, rejects that. That's the word of God the Father. Okay, and now let's talk about the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of people today say that the Holy Ghost is like an energy or a force uh, or something that's like comes out of God like his breath, but it's not actually a person, right? The Holy Ghost is a person. He is real, and he is the third person of the Godhead. Uh, and that is most clear, I believe, in these verses. Uh, in Acts 13, 2, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Now, one could argue that, just like the angel of the Lord speaks in first person, the Holy Ghost is just speaking in first person here. Because in the angel of the Lord, sometimes when the angel is speaking, it'll say, or he'll say, um, by myself I have sworn, saith the Lord. Now, notice though, the angel said, saith the Lord. It doesn't say, saith the angel, or saith Gabriel, or saith Michael. It's always, saith the Lord. Because if you were to have like a messenger 
<clears throat> I should I should have done my my homework on this and got some examples from the Old Testament. But when a messenger of a king is coming, it doesn't he doesn't say thus saith you know my name the messenger. He says thus saith the king the king's name. But look what happens here in Acts twenty one eleven. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. So shall the Jews of Jerusalem. So it's the Holy Ghost himself who is giving this message to Paul about going to Jerusalem. Now, in John 16, 13, uh, here's one of the... I cannot get past this. this. This is, to me at least, this is the biggest evidence of the person of the Holy Ghost. It says, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So, first of all, it says himself. The Holy Ghost has a self. When do we ever say anything is a self when it's just a force or an energy? But the Holy Ghost is a himself, according to Jesus. This is Jesus speaking. And he can hear, and he can speak, and he will show things like... He is his own person. He's the third person of the Godhead. So let's get into the patterns of the Godhead in the King James Bible. First of all, we're going to start off with a very common or one that's been made popular. And that is the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost giving us 777 mentions in the entire King James Bible. Now this, as I said before, is a raw pattern. When it comes to raw versus pure, if this was a pure pattern, we would... Uh, uh, make sure that all of these mentions of the Father are talking about God the Father, and all these mentions of the Word are talking about Jesus Christ. But this is not a pure pattern. This is what we call, call a raw pattern. A raw pattern is where we're just looking at the words of the Bible, of how they show up, how many times you see that, regardless of who it's talking about or what it's talking about. We're just looking at the text itself, which in a way requires even more faith to believe that this is <laughs> this Bible inspired because you're talking about not just the amount of times that person showing up, but you're talking about the amount of times that exact word, those exact words are showing up regardless of the person. So now there are certain uh, uh, there are there is logic to this as well. Like God deals in types and in patterns all throughout the Bible, where in the Old Testament He's showing a picture of something or a pattern of something. And then in the New Testament, it is revealed. It's not the actual thing to represent the actual thing. So that's that's what we're looking at when it comes to raw patterns. And it suggests a much deeper layer of inspiration if it is true. If, I mean, we've already seen in the first five episodes how ridiculous it is that all of this could happen in, in one book with the pure mentions. But now as we see raw patterns come out, in the way that we're going to see it, like, it goes way past my mind. I don't understand how all of it could possibly be clumped together in one single body of text. And yet it is. All of these are found together in the King James Bible, printed today. So, the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost show up 777 mentions in the Bible. Now, this one's really easy to verify as well. Uh, I already have it pulled up here. So, I have the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost. Notice how I just typed it in lowercase because it's just raw mentions. I could type it in all like uppercase if I wanted to as well. It'd be the same thing. If I were to select case sensitive, that would be different because it would look at case sensitivity. But so the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost, and I have Jesus down here, but that's disabled. So let me just get rid of that so you can see. The Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost show up 777 times in the entire Bible. And as you can see, that is not at all talking about God the Father. <laughs> But obviously, anytime you're talking about the Father, that is a picture of the Father. Okay, so. Okay, now let's see how this is verified in the Gospels. If you look in the Gospels only at the, that exact same search phrase, you get the Father plus the Word plus Holy Ghost, which is the exact same search that gives us 777 in the Bible, plus Jesus producing 777 mentions in the Gospels. So this is literally the exact same graph. And by the way, this is not a triquetra or whatever, however you pronounce that thing on the New King James with their logo, where it's like a, uh, like a spiraling Trinity type of symbol um, that 
it's using like witchcraft and stuff. I've been, <laughs> people have asked me before if I'm using that. No, this is not a truck crusher. You can look up. This is a triple Venn diagram. It's just a simple way to display uh, three things combined at once. This has nothing to do with any sort of occult symbolism when I use this uh, Venn diagram. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and I put Jesus here in the middle. Um, and then in the Gospels, we have 777 mentions. So in pure Bible search, if we were just to, uh, if you're new here, by the way, uh, this is pure Bible search. King James pure Bible search can be downloaded for free on purebiblesearch.com for Windows or for Mac or for Linux. So we just add Jesus and we look at all his mentions. So we're going to put the asterisk in there for every single time we see Jesus in the Gospels. Uh, first of all, let's narrow this down. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We get 777 mentions. So all these three words gave us 777 in the entire Bible. And in the Gospels alone, we get 777. I never saw this before, but the Father is 84, which is 77 plus 7. Okay, so we have this pretty deep confirmation, which is what this says. The exact same search that yields 777 in the Bible also yields 777 mentions with the addition of Jesus in the Gospels. <clears throat> so that's pretty, that's pretty staggering how that perfectly goes together. Now, I'm going to keep building off of this, the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost 777. Uh, and how it shows up in the rest of the Bible for a little bit, and then we're going to get into other patterns that are not directly tied into that one. First of all, we're going to go to the uh, the Old Testament, where we're using the exact same search. Now, it says the Father plus the Word, but there are no Old Testament mentions of Holy Ghost. So technically this is Holy Ghost as well, but it's not because there are no mentions of the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament. So for example... In the entire Bible, we have 777. If we just deselect everything and select Old Testament, 401. So what's the big deal about 401? Well, 401 is the sum of the first and the last letter in Hebrew numerics. It's the Aleph and the Tav. So Aleph and Tav, so Aleph is 1 and Tav is 400. 401 is the total value for, which by the way, is a word in Hebrew. It's not a word that translates to anything in English. Here in the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1, 1, you have in the beginning, uh, God created, and then before it goes into the heaven and the earth, you see the, the basically the alpha and omega letters of Hebrew in the middle there, which form a word, which doesn't translate to anything in English, but it is there in the Hebrew, which is kind of interesting. Um, so anyways, 401 is uh, representative of the first and the last, the alpha and the omega of the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, we have the Father and the Word of the exact same search phrase giving us 777, giving us 401. So I find that pretty interesting. Okay, so now let's go to Revelation. So this exact same search phrase in Revelation, it would give us seven mentions by itself because there are no mentions of the Father or Holy Ghost in Revelation. So let me go back to your Bible search. Deselect everything, and we're only going to select Revelation. Seven mentions. Seven mentions, and all of them are the Word. Seven mentions of the Word in Revelation. And if you were to add Jesus, like we did with the Gospels, it would be 21 mentions, or 7 plus 7 plus 7. There are no mentions of the Father, or Holy Ghost, and the Apocalypse. So just looking at this pattern right here, we can see how, once again, just like other patterns we've seen in other episodes, stretching throughout the whole Bible. Now, this one's kind of interesting. Uh, and the only reason I put it in was because of the one that comes after it. So just bear with me. In the first four and the last four books of the Bible, so that would be from Genesis to Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers are the first four books. And then from 2 John to Revelation, here are the last four books, you get seven times seven mentions, or 49 mentions, of the Father and the Word. Um, now, I'm not looking at Holy Ghost. Now, this one, uh, there are a couple, I think there's one mention of Holy Ghost here, but I'm not looking at that one. I'm, this one, I'm just going to show you the Father plus the Word because there are patterns with just the Father and the Word of significance. <laughs> so let me deviate for one second from 
the Godhead with everything, with, including the Holy Ghost. Let me just show you the Father and the Word patterns, and then we'll get back to uh, patterns with the Holy Ghost. Okay, so that's the first four and the last four books, which, by the way, it's only a total of seven books because there's no mentions of any of them in Third John. Third John doesn't mention the Father or the Word, uh, so technically it's only seven books in the first four and the last four. But what's interesting is if you look in the first seven and the last seven, so Genesis to Judges and 1 Peter to Revelation, you get 49 mentions of the Father and you get 49 mentions of the Word. So individually by themselves you get seven times seven mentions each. So this will be really easy to verify. So if I just click disable here. So let's do the first. First of all, do the first four and the last four. So we have Revelation uh, back to 2 John. So as you can see, total, there's 49 mentions or seven times seven. Now, if we do the last seven and the first seven, Joshua Judges is the seventh book. Look at this. There's 49 mentions of the Father and 49 mentions of the Word in the first seven and last seven books of the Bible. Okay, so pretty crazy how that perfectly works out. Um, now, furthermore, with the Father and the Word, this is kind of mysterious because I don't really know what 143 <laughs> is. I do know that the word believe shows up 143 times in the Bible. If we were to just look up the word believe, 143. Uh, but what's interesting is that you get the Father in the New Testament showing up 143 times, and you have the Word in the New Testament showing up 143 times. So out of these 777 mentions, there's 143 of the Father in the New Testament and 143 of the Word in the New Testament. They show up the exact same amount of times. And then you have the Son... Again, these are all raw. All, every single one of these is raw. The sun shows up 143 times two times. 143 plus 143. So if we just go to... So if we type in the Father and just go to the New Testament, 143 mentions. If we type in the Word, 143 mentions. And if we type in the sun, we get 286, which is 143 plus 143. So we've already seen such perfection with pure mentions, and now we're seeing all these alignments and perfections with raw mentions. That's it's like that for for me, the fact that it's both. But let's just keep going before we get too excited. So in the entire Bible, there are an average of seven times seven times seven mentions of the Father plus the Word when you conjoin them. So when we look at con conjoin logic, we see, for example, up here in 1 John 5, 7, we see the Father and the Word right beside each other, and then it says these three are one. That means they're together. So what we do is we say, okay, with that logic of them being conjoined, counting them as one mention instead of two, it would give us 686 mentions, or 343 plus 343, or... 7 times 7 times 7 plus 7 times 7 times 7. Okay, so <clears throat> real quickly, let me also show you show you a pure pattern with the Father and the Word. In the Gospels, now this one is pure. So this one is referring only to God the Father or Jesus Christ the Word. In the Gospels, the Father plus the Word produces 777 mentions. By the way, these little search file IDs, in case you missed the last episode, same sort of system where over here, we have everything, um, I should have just been showing the, you this instead of pulling it up in Pure Bible Search, but we have all these things uh, already um, uh, typed out with Pure Bible Search and screenshot it so you can just quickly verify all of it. But I do welcome you to verify it yourself. I highly recommend you do. Um, okay, so when we look at all the books where the Godhead, where God, the word Godhead is mentioned, so Godhead is only mentioned three times in the Bible. I type in Godhead. It's mentioned in Acts 17, Romans 1, and Colossians 2. So those are the only three mentions. Now, interesting, God is a triune God, and we see Godhead three times. But what's interesting is that if you look up the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost, plus Jesus, plus Christ, you get 343 mentions, or 7 times 7 times 7 mentions, 
in those books where Godhead is mentioned, so Acts, Romans, and Colossians. But furthermore, if you look into chapters where they're mentioned, so Acts 17, Romans 1, and Colossians 2. Over here we're looking at the books. Over here we're looking at the exact chapters of how many mentions. There are 3 times 3 times 3 mentions, or 27 mentions, of the Father, the Word, Holy Ghost, and Jesus and Christ. So, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And then, if you look at all three of those verses where Godhead is mentioned, there are 77 words in those verses. So if you were to count all these words, you would get a total of 77. Okay, so let me zoom back out here. If you were to look at the entire Bible, and um, <clears throat> this is just kind of basically combining two patterns. So, the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost, the top line here gives you 777 mentions. The bottom line, Jesus and Christ, and we're looking at the raw mentions here, give you 777 plus 777 mentions. If you add them together, it gives you 777 times 3, obviously. Those are separate patterns that break down into their own thing, but it's interesting to see them together as well, um, specifically because when you look at Jesus and Christ plus the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost and other patterns, uh, you, see, you see them work out. For example, here in the Gospels, if you look up the Father plus Jesus plus Christ plus the Holy Ghost in the Gospels, I'm looking at a case-sensitive search here, so you see case sense Jesus, you get 777 mentions. And then again, if you do the Father plus the Word plus the Holy Ghost, when the is case-sensitive plus Jesus plus Christ, you get 777 mentions. Okay, so now we're going to look at a step further beyond raw mentions. Now this is kind of in the same same realm as raw mentions. Get rid of the header here. This is sort of in the same dimension as raw mentions, but it's it's different as well because this is really this one is like uh, for me it's even almost troubling. Like, is it really this precise? Um, okay, so you see, Father plus Son plus Spirit. So whenever you see those words capitalized. In the entire Bible, you get 777 mentions. But it's not what it seems at first, because look at what happens. So let me first of all show you. So Father, with that little asterisk. Son. And Spirit, with that asterisk. So that gives you 777 mentions. Father, Son, and Spirit. So whenever you see this word capitalized, obviously they're not all referring to God the Father or Jesus the Son, but... Furthermore, this is looking at anything that goes after those words. So with Father, it's looking at Father or Fathers or Fathers. But Spirit is looking at Spirit or Spirits. But look what happens when we open up song, uh, Son. It's also looking at mentions of Song. So, I, <laughs> you're welcome to think that's just a coincidence. But I have no idea how it shows up so perfectly with everything else. Um, I put down here like the concealed just to be I'm being very transparent of how this all works You see the word a song or psalm of Asaph is literally looking at the word son and It's it's counting that as part of the count and if you do in the entire Bible all the capitalized mentions give you that exact sum so it's kind of similar in the same grain as raw mentions where uh you're not, I mean, raw mentions you're not looking at when it's talking about Jesus Christ, but this is taking a step further where you're looking inside of words. So, I just think that's interesting enough to point out because of how, how simple it is. Father, Son, and Spirit. I mean, you can't get much simpler than that. Okay, so, over here, if you were to look at Father, Son, and Spirit without that asterisk, so you are just looking at words talking about Father and Son and Spirit, you're not, you don't have any song in there. If you include... Um, uh, capitalized Holy One, you get 777 mentions as well, and these three are one, the Holy One. Uh, so I think that's very interesting. That goes very well together. Um, so Father capitalized 260, that's Roll. Son capitalized 297, that's Roll. Spirit capitalized, I believe that would be pure, 172 mentions, and then Holy One capitalized 48 mentions, giving you a total of 777. Um, so yeah, and here's another place where we see the Father and the Son and the Spirit together. 
And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's move on here. So now we're going to start building upwards. In the New Testament, if we look at the most common alternate names to the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost, so the Father is most known as God, the Word is most known as Jesus, Holy Ghost is most known as Holy Spirit. So this is how it shows up in the Bible, and this is how it's most often spoken in churches. Gives you a total of 777 plus 777 plus 777 mentions in the New Testament. God plus Jesus plus Holy Spirit. Again, Holy Spirit shows up seven times in the Bible. If you, if you did not know that, Holy Spirit, seven mentions in the Bible. Which means if any of those mentions of Holy Spirit in the New Testament were translated as Holy Ghost, or vice versa, you would lose all these patterns because you would lose, you would lose this one, and you would lose this one, um, and yeah, you would lose this one too because one of them, the Holy Spirit, your Spirit capitalized, if it was translated as Holy Ghost. So this one too, this one will be gone. <laughs> if you were to translate Holy Spirit as Holy Ghost differently than the way that the, that is translated in the King James Bible, all of this would be erased. Yet you get seven mentions of Holy Spirit. You get 777 mentions of the Father, the Word, Holy Ghost. Like it really gets your mind going of how did that so perfectly happen before computers? Because this Bible been, has been printed since mechanical printing, since before digital. This Bible has been in print the exact way that it stands today. Now, if you look in the entire Bible, so we're, this is God and Jesus and Holy Spirit. Now, if you look up the word His Spirit, you get 777 times 7 mentions. So 777 times 3 with Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And in the entire Bible, 777 times 7 mentions with His Spirit. The exact same uh, with God and Jesus. This is These are all raw mentions. Uh, everything here so far, except for this one down here, everything here is raw mentions. So this is just in the plain text of Scripture. So I have that uh, broken down here. These patterns wondrously overlap. God plus Jesus plus blank spirit. His spirit, 777 times 7 in the Bible. Holy Spirit, 777 times 3 in the New Testament. Uh, a good example, I actually have it over here, of His spirit is Isaiah 48, 16. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I, and now the Lord God and His Spirit hath sent me. That's Jesus Christ speaking through the prophet Isaiah by the Holy Ghost. And we know that from John chapter 8 when he is, he is basically quoting this in his own fashion. It's very obvious once you look at it. Okay, so next is, these are pure mentions now. So I'm pretty sure the rest of the chart, we're dealing with pure mentions. Okay, so... Down here we have raw mentions, and up here we're going to have pure mentions. Okay, so now we're looking at the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I have it in gray right here with the apostrophe S because there are no mentions of the Son with the apostrophe S. And there are no mentions of the Holy Ghost with the apostrophe S. But there are the Fathers. So I'm just showing you that to show you consistency. The Father plus the Son plus Holy Ghost gives you 389 mentions, pure in the Bible. 389 is connected to seven in two different ways. First of all, actually three different ways. First of all, it's the 77th prime. Second of all, it's the exact middle number of 777, which is really easy to verify. If you just get a calculator and do 389 plus 388 and minus 388. Minus 388 is gonna give you one. 389 minus 388 gives you one. Plus 388 gives you 777. That's an easy way to verify the middle number. And it's the 77th prime number. Now it's also <clears throat> the 389th additive prime, 5903, is the 777th prime number. 
So 5,903 is the 777 prime number, and it's also the 389th additive prime. So these numbers in mathematics are very well connected. And an additive prime number is a prime number in which the sum of the digits also produces a prime number. Um, the 777 prime is 5,903. 5 plus 9 plus 0 plus 3 equals 17. And 17 is a prime number. Therefore, 5,903 is an additive prime number. It's the 389th if you count them all in order. So anytime you see a prime number and the, the I think it's called the digit sum or the root sum or something like that adds up to a prime number, then it's an additive prime. That's not something I made up. That's something that's, you know, you can look up yourself. And then of course, 389 times 777 will give you T777, one plus two plus three plus, but that's actually gonna be true of any number times its middle number. So if you have any number times its middle number, you're going to get the, the, the T number. Okay, so the triangular number, I should say. Okay, so let's go to God plus Father plus Jesus plus Holy Ghost. In the entire Bible, looking at case-sensitive mentions, so obviously there's uppercase mentions of God and there's uppercase mentions of Jesus. We're just looking at them as they, uh, like this, when they're capitalized. There are exactly 777 times 7 mentions. Father, Jesus, and Holy Ghost, obviously, that is God. Gives you 777 times 7 mentions. So, this, by the way, let's see here, just to show you how this works. This is P25. So, if I were to look, verify this over here, P25 is here. So, as you can see, God, Father, Jesus, Holy Ghost, the entire thing is consistent. We remove the anti-mentions down here by excluding them. So Father Abraham is not talking about God the Father. And all the anti-mentions of Jesus. And you get 5,439, which is 777 times 7. Okay, so let's go back. And we only have a few more here. Okay, so down here we have Father plus Son, which... These are pure mentions, so that, from the first episode, you saw it gave us 70 times 7 mentions. Plus Holy Ghost, plus uh, Holy Spirit, when Holy Spirit is capitalized. So the reason I have a slash right here is because it's either Holy Ghost, capital Holy, or, or Holy Ghost, or, or Holy Spirit, capital Holy, Holy Spirit. Okay, so plus Jesus Christ gives you 777 mentions. Again, that can be seen here in P26. So just how you see the work. So Father and Son, 70 times 7 mentions. Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, when they're capitalized. And Jesus Christ gives you 777 mentions. Okay. And we're almost done. This one also builds off of that Father and Son pattern where there's 70 times 7 mentions of Father and Son in the Bible. And in the New Testament, if you simply add Holy Ghost you get 70 times 7 verses. So 490 verses. So, again, there's overlap on overlap on overlap. And that, of course, overlaps with everything with, you know, like I said before, with if Holy Spirit were translated as Holy Ghost, or vice versa, again, this would be messed up. This would not exist. That's a, that is also the equation that Jesus himself spoke in Matthew 18.22. I'm assuming most people watching this have seen the other episodes. So I don't want to repeat myself too much. But I very much encourage you to watch those episodes if you haven't seen them yet. Um, now, when you take uh, Father plus Son plus the Holy Ghost plus Jesus, that's all pure mentions of Jesus. You get 777 plus 777 mentions in the New Testament. And then lastly, but not leastly, when you look up Lord, all mentions of Lord in the New Testament. So that's whenever it's capitalized or if it's fully uppercase, which it is a couple times. So Lord, Jesus, Christ, Holy Ghost, and Holy Spirit. Obviously, in the Gospels, Lord is often referring to the Father. Um, and in the Epistles, it's usually referring to Jesus. But in the Gospels, it's usually the Father. And it's also including all uppercase Lord, like Jehovah, which is definitely talking about the Father in the context where it has the Lord said unto my Lord. So even as you can see here in Luke 2.26, it says, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost, that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Obviously, that's referring to God the Father. Okay, so 777 times 3 mentions. And I, we'll show that over here as well, the very last one, just so you can see it categorized. 
where we have Lord, Jesus and Christ, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, giving you a total of 777 times three mentions in the New Testament. So it doesn't get much more perfect, especially when you look at it combined with all the other patterns that we saw in the King James Bible with Father and Son and Jesus Christ and all the first and the last patterns. We're looking at the very highest. We're looking at, you, you can't go higher than God. And I know this might sound a little strange, but back before we knew all this, back before when we were just in the beginning of when this was all starting to come to light. Do you realize how much faith it takes to start looking up how many times Jesus shows up in the Bible or Jesus in Christ? Because if those names are not perfect, if, if the Godhead, if the Father is not perfect in the Bible, then what's, what's the use of all the other patterns? Because what do they prove? What's the, use, what's the use of something that's lesser? That would mean God would have uh, secretly encoded something to be greater than himself. But that's not at all what we see. We see God revealing himself in perfection. What do you believe? Do you think this is random or do you think this is the mind of God? Do you think this all could have possibly just fell together in the most fruit-bearing Bible in history? When I look at the Bible and all these things, I'm not, I'm not just looking at a few things. I see all of this that God has revealed, and it is, it's immaculate. It's miraculous. What can we do about it? I believe this is of the mind of God. So what do you believe? And by the way, if you are not born again, if you're watching this and you have no idea if you're saved, if you're going to heaven or hell, there is only one way. Not according to me, but according to the Bible, according to this word, which is so perfectly revealed to us. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way to get to the Father than Jesus Christ. He is. What he did on the cross was take your sins on his own self, and he bare them on the tree. And when he offered himself up to God... He was sinless and perfect. And what happened was he gave you his righteousness. He shed his perfect blood for you so that God's wrath was appeased and it was done in sacrificial love and complete love. And the whole thing made it possible for you to get to the Father, for you and I to go to heaven through Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. And when he rose again, he offered us newness of life and we also rise again with him when we believe on him. We're born again. We are born of the Spirit of God when we believe on him. So if you have never taken the moment from your own heart, calling out to Christ, calling out to Jesus, and asking him for salvation, it's not a specific formula, a specific prayer. It's you realizing you're a sinner. You are going to hell because you are a sinner. And looking at the Savior, and taking his hand and calling out to him, asking him directly from your heart to his, will you save me? Please save me. I believe in you. I believe you died for my sins. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. God bless.